In this lesson, I'm going to talk about different types of network cables. We did talk about the OSI model, the IP addresses, and the subnets. Moving forward, let's get into the physical aspects of the networking. So here in this lesson, just focusing on different types of cables that are used to connect networks together, whether it's your own network or two different networks. So a cable is simply defined as the medium through which information usually travels from one network device to another. So from one computer to the other, the information or data is transferred through a cable, assuming that you have your own network within your own organization or home. If you need to send data from one medium to the other across cities, for example, or different continents or countries, obviously medium is still used not physical cables perhaps maybe wireless and in some instances it's a combination of both so networking cables which form the basic networks are networking hardware used to connect one network device to another network device or to connect two or more computers to share printers scanners and so forth main two types of network cables are the twisted pair cabling which comes in two varieties shielded and unshielded twisted pair cable the utp also known as of course the unshielded twisted pair is the most popular and common so every time you see a network cable connecting two computers most likely it's a utp cable here are the different categories of cables. In the industry, usually they talk about category 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. They don't really say, give me an unshielded cable or twisted pair cable. They simply go out to a shop and they say, well, I need to buy a category 5 cable, which is the most common one, or category 3, category 2, and they'll give you the entire length of cable whichever suits your own requirements they'll cut out the cable physically and hand it over to you so category one is the voice only so your telephone lines typically they go through the category one cable category two can handle data up to four mbps which means megabits per second and that's just local talk for example cat 3 as they call it right so it's cat 1 cat 2 cat 3 that's the industry standard by the way when we talk about cables so cat 3 is data that can handle up to 10 megabits per second speed which is also known as the ethernet cat 4 can have data up to 20 megabits per second this is also referred to as mips right so if you hear the short version of this it's called mips so cat 4 and data to 20 MIPS is required within a token ring network. CAD5, once again, is very common, has data up to 100 MIPS, and then also known as the fast Ethernet. So these terms are synonymous, right? So we talk about CAD5, we talk about fast Ethernet, it's the same thing. And then, of course, we have the category 5E, which is the gigabit Ethernet and CAT6 up to 2500 MIPS. So just sort of memorize UTP categories. So when you go out there to a shop, for example, to buy these cables or you order these cables online through a vendor, you need to just tell them I need CAT5, I need CAT3, 2, 1, and so on. Once you have the cables, obviously you need a connector that actually physically connects to your computer. Into a computer jack, for example, whether you're using a laptop or a personal computer or a printer even. Sometimes you need to have a connector. Almost all the time you need a connector in one form or the other. The most common one is called the RJ45 connector, which is the standard connector for UTP cables. This is a plastic connector that looks like a large telephone style connector. So if you notice within your computer, you'll see the RJ45 connector. 
you can simply pop it out and insert it back again. A slot on your computer allows the RJ45 to be inserted only one way. RJ stands for, by the way, registered jack, implying that the connector follows a standard borrowed from the telephone industry and this standard designates which wire goes with each pin inside the connector. The next type of cable is the shielded twisted pair cable. So we talked about the unshielded, right? The cat 1, 2, 3, cat 4, 5 and so on. So now let's take a look at what a shielded twisted pair cable or known as the STP cable is all about. So although UTP cable is obviously least expensive, it may be susceptible to radio and electrical frequency interference. So for example, if you have a network cable next to an electrical device or power socket, you may find data loss, right? Or reduced speeds of data transfer. This is essentially known as the term is called attenuation. And I'll talk about that later too, but for now, since it came up, you need to know that the UTP cable, which is unshielded, although it's inexpensive, right? It may be susceptible to attenuation. If you must place a cable in environments with lots of potential interference, the better bet is to buy a shielded twisted pair. And these cables can also help to extend the maximum distance of the cable. So that's the basic main difference between UTP and STP cables. The next type of cable is the fiber optic cable. This consists of a central glass core surrounded by several layers of protected material. It can transmit light rather than electronic signals, eliminating the problem of electrical interference. So here with the fiber optic cable, we're not worried about the attenuation problems. And this makes it ideal for environments that contain a large amount of electrical interference. Maybe you're working in a factory, electronic factory that has nothing but electronic signals. So fiber optic cable would be the best possible solution. Patch cables is another type. This is also called the straight through cable. Most common type of patch cable is used to connect a computer to a central connecting device like a switch. So for example, if you take your computer and you want to connect to a centralized device like a switch or a hub, for example, you would need a patch cable. This is also a crossover cable which is used to direct connect similar devices without the use of hub. So two similar devices can directly be connected through a crossover cable. Last is the wireless standards. The Wi-Fi Alliance, which is a global nonprofit organization that helps to ensure standards and interoperability for wireless networks. And wireless networks are often referred to as Wi-Fi, which the acronym is, by the way, Wireless Fidelity. So the Wi-Fi networks use the Ethernet protocol. And the grid here shows you the standards. So for instance, the standard 802.11a has a maximum speed of transfer of data at 54 megabits per second, and typical range is 150 feet. 802.11b standard has 11 MIPS with 300 feet, and so forth. So just know these wireless standards as well. So in this lesson, just wanted to demonstrate different types of cables their characteristics, their features and functions, and based on your own requirement, you would go out there and buy the cable to deploy it on your own network. So I hope this helps practice and let's move to the next lesson.